What's up, Walking Dead friends and family? It's Brian Castrillo here, back with another video, and I am incredibly excited. There is so much going on. We got a lot of new information, um, a lot of reveals in the in the future, and I took a lot of notes and just a lot of stuff I want to talk about. Got some information to kind of go over with you guys, and let's start out with some some congratulations. First, a big shout out to Norman Reedus, who just got his walk of his star in the Walk of Fame, and one of these days, if any of you guys are from California and you're able to take pictures, I'd love to see it. Um, you know, you can always hit me up on YouTube. I'm going to leave my my Facebook, my Instagram, my Twitter feed, my TikTok. I'm going to put that all in the in in the um, descriptions where you you can you know link up to me if you'd like. But um, but yeah, so Norman Reedus, he he got his Walk of Fame star, which much deserved um he's an amazing actor he's been amazing in the walking dead universe of course a huge fan favorite and i can tell you from personal experience um well real quick back in i believe it was 2014 i want to say or or 13 um i went to C cincinnati horror hound and there was this huge snowstorm and you know this this built he was it was kind of closing time and this big building, you know, they had this room where all these chairs were set up and they're like back and forth, back and forth, where everybody was kind of in a line. You you know, you sat in your chair and then this line was so big for Norman and it was going out, out of that room, up this like huge winding stairs where it came outside around the entire building. It was ridiculous. Um, not surprised, but huge line. And so it was coming time for the end of the con for that day and... You know, you could see some of the other celebrities leaving. They were going home, but and I was I was last in line. There's this big blizzard. It's get it's cold. A lot of snow, and you see Norman Reedus and his people. They kind of come out. They look at kind of take an assessment of the line, and then they go back in. And then some of the people for the con come out, and they take everybody in. And they basically said that Norman Reedus was going to stay till. He gets to see everybody, um, which he did, because like I said, I was one of the last few people in line and incredibly impressed by that day because he, he didn't have to. But but he did, took care of everybody and just an amazing time um, when I met him. And, and when you get to, if you ever get to meet him in person, he he is real. He really goes out of his way for his fans. But so he's getting a star much deserved in the Hollywood Walk of Fame. And one of these days I'm going to have to make it out there. Um, so another, another, um, big congratulations that's kind of going out to a lot of, see the walking dead, a lot of the cast members are getting a lot of these roles and becoming superheroes. They're all becoming soups. You got Denai Guerrera, who is in Black Panther, of course, is Okoye. You got Ross Marquand, who is already in the Avengers as Red Skull, but some, some big ones. Have you guys been watching Loki, um, kind of switch off because Loki has been amazing and I, I love Marvel that's one of my I may do a, a video at um at the end of Loki just because I, I love the series so much but our own Kaylee Fleming who of course plays Judith Grimes um is going to be in that she is I believe in this upcoming episode um that's coming out very soon and she's going to be playing a young Sylvie Cushton um and I, I'm incredibly excited to see her i mean this, this girl has done it all and and at a young age she's already in the star wars universe she's in the walking dead universe and now she's in marvel universe what i mean i am excited to see what is in her future she's going to be doing big things and also you know lauren ridloff another big one she is going to be in the movie eternals i cannot wait for that that's why you know she was um you know, kind of stepped away from Walking Dead for a, while, a little while because she had to do a lot of filming for that. And of course, in the storyline, Connie is missing. Um, but we do know that she was found by, um, <laughs> I'm forgetting his name right now, but um, Virgil. Um, and we don't really know what's going, you know, going to happen with her. Um, but I'm going to come back to that. But I'm excited to see her in the Marvel's Eternals that's coming out. Um, and another big one, um, Lori Holden, who played Andrea in seasons, let's see, that was one, two, and three. She just got chosen to be Crimson's, 
the Crimson Countess in the boys. <laughs> I love that. Love, 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 love that, that, um, that show. And it, it, season three from with, with all the, if you know, the new people that are coming in there, it's, it's looking like it's going to be a big deal, but this, she, it looks now, I don't know a lot about the Crimson Countess. And if you guys have read the comics, um, to this, I haven't, you know, let me know in the, in the comment section and let me know what you, um, let me know about her, but it looks like she is somewhat of a parody off the Scarlet Witch, and and it it looks she looks like she this is going to be a, a really big deal, um, and you know I congratulated her on on Twitter and she got right back to me and she she was like thank you Brian I'm very happy girl, um, so I'm ex and I've seen some of the photos like from the comics what she kind of looks like that's why I think she. Looks somewhat of a Scarlet Witch, but knowing the boys, this is going to be great. Um, great cast. I'm excited. So a lot of our cast is, you know, they're becoming superheroes in the Marvel and DC world. And I'm excited to see Andrea play that role. I'm excited to see Lauren Ridloff play Makari in The Eternals. I'm excited to see Kayla Fleming and Loki playing the young Sylvie Cushion. That's cool. three exciting things coming for them but yeah let's get right down to it now we also have Jacob Young who's going to be joining the cast and from pictures I've seen I'm not sure if he's going to be you know part of the Reapers or if he is going to be possibly Sebastian Milton or someone from the, the Commonwealth it's a little too early but I'm kind of leaning towards the Reapers I'm not sure though um, and hopefully maybe this next reveal we might get some some cast casting information because we're still waiting on that but we did um now while i was on twitter i did notice that angela kang in the comics i was um a gentleman by the name of and i'm probably going to pronounce this wrong but maytham harb it's at h-a-r-b m-a-i-t-h-a-m asked at angela kang when will the trailer be released and angela kang she replied and I quote, during San Diego Comic-Con in July, we're just putting the finishing touches on it. So now we know when the trailer's coming. Um, we're getting that at San Diego Comic-Con, which will be in late July. I cannot wait for that. But there's got to be some casting news. Like, who were some of those new faces in the earlier, you know, the week before when we got those pictures where you see them in the in the tunnel, you see... Get, Father Gabriel, he's looking at the graffiti that we saw back from the other releases where um, where they're in a tunnel where it's lit up and it says something to the to the tune of God's going to have, he's, he's going to have to forgive me or no, I'm, he's going to have to seek my forgiveness um, essentially. And, and you see Father Gabriel. I, I know I'm missing that quote, but, um, oh, actually, wait a minute, let me pull that up right here, because I want to get that right. Father, yeah, God's going to basically ask to have to ask for his forgiveness. Do you consider yourself a Um, but really interesting picture, um, so I'm not sure with Jacob Young, if he's going to be with the, the Reapers or the Commonwealth, but he, he could be with the Reapers. Now, now, um, before I get deep into The Walking Dead, I want to I wanna kind of speak on Fear of the Walking Dead. Amazing season fear, season six. I'm excited for um, seven and where this is going to go as far as the whole Walking Dead universe. And so where we left off is, you know, we have these multiple warheads going off. We see Strand, who looks like he's going to become somewhat of a villain. Um, and then you got... You know, Morgan and Grace, who are kind of like in the mix of things, but it looks like the, the warheads are kind of going off a little bit further, so they may be safe. And it was confirmed by, I believe it was on comicbook.com, that, you know, um, Skidmark is safe, so I, I'm excited for that. I'm, I'm happy he's, he's safe. But so we're kind of left in peril where these other warheads are going to 
you know, land is the rest of our group being safe. And then, you know, at, at the very end, you see Isabel come in and, and she saves some of our group from, there's Luciana there, there's Sarah, Wes, Charlie, Daniel, Rabbi Jacob, um, are all there running and you see Isabel or I don't know if it was actually the actress um, Sydney Lemon who was in that costume but you see Isabel the character who is right there and she has the walkie where Althea is talking and, and saying don't you know don't ask any questions just we're, we're going to help get you safe um, so they all go in there and you of course see that to me now that that scene is iconic where you see Wes painting um, this is not the um, end I believe but you see at the end is written on Riley and he's walking off into the distance with the, you know, the nuke going off and really, really cool scene. But so what I kind of did is I, um, I was kind of thinking about how is this going to affect world beyond and the walking dead as kind of a greater thing? Because of course, Isabel is part of the CRM and you, you gotta, you gotta assume that the CRM as big as they are, has got to know some knowledge of what's going on in Texas. This is a huge event. Um, and of course, Althea got, you know, Isabel to, to help them. But what did, did Althea, did, what did she have to do to, you know, make sure, secure the safety of her, you know, our, our group, our family. And so I was throwing a few things around. And one of the, the kind of the big thing is, is it possible that Althea, you know, maybe join the CRM? Um, because, and does the CRM know what Isabel did? Is Are they in trouble? Did this helicopter, is it going to actually survive the remaining warheads? Is everybody going to get to safety? Those are things that we're waiting on in, you know, the premiere for um, season seven. And of course, if you've been following me on all my social media or if you know me, you know I believe Madison is out there. I've been saying it since, um, you know, she died at Dell Diamond Stadium because we didn't see a body. The last thing we saw is she threw the flare out, which, um, and no one's gone, as, un, you know, until they're gone, her famous saying. And that reminds me of season two when you see Shane throw the flare into the walkers to and where he ends up killing Otis to get away. But... So that clearly walkers are attracted to that. So that could have given her the opportunity to get away. Um, but so what I was doing is I went over to the different actresses who play the characters who Isabel helped escape. And I was I wanted to see who they followed as far as the big shows. Now, I'm assuming they all, you know, followed Fear the Walking Dead because that's their show. But... And Walking Dead wouldn't be a big, big thing because that's a that's a major show, and they probably are all fans of it to some extent. Um, but I was curious as to who followed the world beyond because um, if you go back to an, an interview with Skimple, Skimple, Gimple, he he promised that we were going to see you know some familiar faces on there, which I do believe Jadis is going to be there. Um, but could there be some people from Fear the Walking Dead? So now typically if you're on a show, you're going to follow your own, your own show because you support it. But who followed, you know, the different shows? So I'm going to go over this. You know, I took some notes here and Luciana, Denai Guerrera, Garcia rather, not Denai, sorry, but Denai Garcia, of course, was following Fear the Walking Dead. She followed The Walking Dead, which um, that I don't think is very telling, but she did recently follow World Beyond. Now, keep in mind that Isabel is part of the CS, the CRM. The World Beyond is a show about the CRM. Could she be going to the CRM? But let me go over the list, and then I'm going to come back to who is following World Beyond and what, what that possibly could mean. So Sarah, played by Mo Collins, is following Fear the Walking Dead, The Walking Dead, and World Beyond. So now we got Denai Garcia and Mo Collins following World Beyond. So let's go over the rest of them who are there. Wes... He was following Fear the Walking Dead and The Walking Dead, not following World Beyond. Alexa Nysonson, she was following Fear the Walking Dead, The Walking Dead, not World Beyond. Ruben Blaze, following 
Fear the Walking Dead, The Walking Dead, Not World Beyond. Peter Jacobson, who plays Rabbi Jacob, he wasn't following any of them, which kind of surprised me. Um, but the only show he was following is one of his shows, Colony USA, which I am not familiar with. But I was kind of surprised to see him not following any of the Walking Dead Universe shows. on. And I'm looking on Instagram is what I was checking. Now, Maggie Grace, who plays Althea, of course, was following Fear the Walking Dead, not following The Walking Dead, and not following The World Beyond. The actress who plays um, Isabel, Sidney Lemon, was following none of the shows. But I, I... Looked up something and I noticed that she was part of um, a 13-minute short horror film, which I'm trying to find this. If any of you guys can find this, please let me know. But she was she played a zombie in this, and it's called How to Survive a Zombie Attack, which I thought was pretty interesting considering what she's doing right now. But it's 13 minutes. I found it on IMDb as part of um, her history. And if anybody has access to or knows how I can watch this, please let me know in the comments. I really want to find that. Um, so now we know that only Denai Garcia and Mo Collins at this moment have followed World Beyond. What does that mean? Could these be some of the, the familiar faces that we could be seeing there um, in World Beyond? Now, one of the things I said as far as the theme of that final, you know, arc where, you know, the in season six and going, you know, going to seven with the, the nukes and everything was, I believe there is going to be some sacrifices. We didn't see too many of that in it with, um, with the exception of Rachel who sacrificed herself for her, um, little, you know, baby Morgan. But what if Luciana and Sarah sacrificed themselves and, they go to the CRM. Now, why would they want to go? Why would them specifically out of the, everybody else? Now, if you look at Wes, you know, he's an artist. And the CRM wants the best and the brightest to help build, you know, for a future. Maybe that's not a big deal to them. Charlie, her, she's just a kid. Um, Daniel now, I don't know, he's a, he's a smart guy, but of course he has that that special forces um, military operation skill, but I don't. I doubt he's going to say anything about it. But um, but of course he's. And then we got Rabbi Jacob. He is a rabbi. That's kind of his skill set. Althea, um, which I mentioned, I I think she may have she may join the CRM. That's how she was able to secure the helicopter. Possibly, I I don't know. Um, but what the Luc what does Luciana and Sarah provide. Now, Sarah is, for at least from what I've gained, is an expert mechanic. She can fix just about anything, which that could become very useful in, you know, going forward in the apocalypse. And Luciana knows how to make gasoline. She knows how to refine oil. And and if you and if you go to World Beyond and you know even Fear, where they found fuel fuel drops, which are everywhere. How how important is that going to be if Luciana is taken by the CRM because of her knowledge of how to create gas? She could be, she she might be in control of these fuel drops that we see in the map in World Beyond going into season two. So, what? Yeah, what if those two are? We're going to see them in World Beyond. Now that brings a question: Is you know what's going to happen to everybody else? Do they? Escape now. We did hear at the end of Fear the Walking Dead, Luciana say to Daniel, and they spoke in Spanish, which was kind of interesting. As long as we stick together, we should be fine. Um, so, is this helicopter going to crash? Is every going to is everyone going to be okay? Um, I guess we're going to have to find out now. Kind of my prediction as far as Madison goes, because Madison does live. I think we're going to see. And I said this in my, one of my previous videos that Strand is going to become somewhat of a villain. I think we're going to see Madison return. Maybe she's the one who finds Alicia or they in season seven, we may find some bit of strong evidence as to her survival. But I think when she comes back, she is going to be kind of torn because Victor, I mean, that's her drinking buddy. That's her, you know, her best friend in the apocalypse. And Alicia, of course, is her daughter. 
Um, and I could see them kind of becoming kind of like, if you remember the poster for All Out War, you have Negan versus Rick. What if it's Madison versus Victor Strand? And, and I could see her, you know, trying to say that there's still good in him. And she wants to kind of like, kind of like a Star Wars scene where you see Luke Skywalker, you know, try and save his dad because there's still good in him. Um, and I could see Madison, you know, trying to do that with Victor, but in the end, she ends up killing him um, because, because I see Victor going down a dark path. And Coleman Domingo is amazing, and I, I'm really excited to see him play the, the villain role. Um, so, yeah, so that's when it comes to fear. But let's get, let's get right down to The Walking Dead. Um, so the big reveal on this one was... Um, before I say that, I, I just want to let you know that The Walking Dead did did say that they are going to... You're going to be able to stream The Walking Dead Season 10. Um, that should be available in the USA on Netflix July 26th. So that's kind of big news for everyone who's going to be catching up, binge watching, um, and whatnot. Um, that's going to be huge. And let's see... Oh, and just today I saw this on Instagram. Matt Negretti posted that The Walking Dead World Beyond just finished filming. So that's huge. So I, I imagine Comic-Con, we're going to get a World Beyond trailer. We're going to get a Walking Dead trailer. Um, if we're lucky, maybe some kind of teaser for the Rick Grimes movies, but... I don't think I don't think Andrew Lincoln has even left England yet. So I believe over over in England their their protocols during this COVID situation um that the world is dealing with, I think they're a little stricter and he hasn't been able to leave yet, but I'm not a hundred percent on that. So if you guys have heard anything, um, you know, let me know in the comments. Um but yeah, let's get let's get going to this re the reveal, which they gave us the for Part A, basically the first eight episodes, we got all the titles and we got the two synopsis for the first two. So I'm going to read off these, um, the you know, the first eight titles and I'm going to read the synopsis to you. And then we're going to kind of go about like, what does that mean? Um, so, so 1101 is called a Acheron. If I'm saying that right, there's a part one and then 1102 is Acheron part two. So it's a two part big reveal that's going to be huge. Um, and I'm going to get into that and in just when I after I read these and what and kind of double down on a prediction that I made um, that I've been saying in, in previous videos for a while now. And but let's get let's read these now. 1103 is hunted. Um, well, actually, you know what? Let's let's let's. Let's do this, um, my prediction. So, now, Acheron Part 1 and 2, that, I believe, is going to be heavily involved into the Reapers. And um, and let's read the synopsis. So, let's see. I'm going to pull that up on my laptop over here. And I'm going to read what it says in comicbook.com. Um, so, The Walking Dead, this is not the synopsis, but The Walking Dead descends into the underworld when the survivors trek into zombie filled subway tunnels. In a two part season, 11A premiere, Acheron Part 1 and Acheron Part 2, AMC Networks on Thursday revealed the titles of the first eight episodes, which I'm going to get into, uh, season 11, and they're hinting at the return of the Reapers, which um, hunting Maggie Ree, Lauren Cohan, and their group, which is called the Warden. So that's that's kind of big. We know a little bit more about her group, you know, Cole, um, Elijah, and the two other people who I don't know who they were, but and maybe those are the, the people that we saw in some of the photos at Alexandria that are also in this um the subway tunnel with them. But but by the waved off um so and the wardens her which is the name of her group, the road weary group of zombie apocalypse survivors seeking shelter at Alexandria, but the walled off community is overcrowded, underfed, and now struggling to survive in the wake of the Whisper War that left the hilltop community in ashes and Alexandrian ruins. Um so the wardens, um that's 
going to kind of double down on my prediction, but I want to read the synopsis now. So in Acheron Part 1, this is what it reads. Returning to Alexandria from a critical food mission, the group realizes it isn't enough. Maggie pr proposes a new plan, potentially a suicide mission. What choice do they have? They must find more food for their people in order to survive and efficiently rebuild Alexandria. If they don't, Alexandria falls, taking them down with it. Once on the road, a violent storm erupts, forcing them underground into a subway tunnel. As nerves fray, as suspicions increase, and chaos ensues. The terror is re relentless as our people get a glimpse of what Maggie and her group endured prior to returning to Alexandria. Meanwhile, those captured by the strange soldiers um, are relocated to another undisclosed um, location. And then in Acheron Part 2, it says, The group discovers a member did not make it to safety inside the subway car surrounded by walkers. And that I believe that's the... We see that picture of the walkers in the subway car, but um, surrounded by walkers, going back into the tunnel to search is a guaranteed death wish. All eyes are on Negan as their rule of survival shifts. It is no longer no man left behind. The motto now is we keep going. With very little ammo and energy remaining, the group must ready themselves as walkers have found a way inside the subway train. Meanwhile, Daryl is in his own intense hellish situation, trying to find Dog and finding more than he expected. And Yumiko challenges the process at the Commonwealth Outpost, which threatens her future and that of Eugene, Ezekiel, and the Princess. So, let's. I'm going to get into my prediction and how that ties into that. So... My prediction is, if you go back to when we last seen Maggie, then not I'm, I'm not talking about 10C, but back when she was, you know, running the hilltop, she ran into three people, Georgie and and the twins. I'm I can't remember their names, but so Georgie, from what she said, she was trade. She wanted to trade um, information. She wanted to help grow. And she asked for like music in return um, because she was and she would come back, um, you know, for something later. But she was looking for, you know, the best communities, the bright, you know, the brightest people. Now, who does that remind you of the CRM? You go back to how they took hope because they felt she was the, you know, the brightest and and she could really help the future. Um, so back to Georgie. Now, again, she was trading with Maggie and the group. But she did not trade with Alexandria. She did not trade with the kingdom. She did not trade with the saviors. Um, basically, specifically picked out Maggie. Now, now we know Maggie left with, with Georgie. Um, from their letters that they were shown writing back and forth and what she was doing. And there was a group that they had in Tennessee, you know, they were building. Um, but now let's go back to the episode we saw in Tennessee. I believe it was episode 17. And, you know, we see Maggie and Cole, Elijah, um, and, and Herschel Jr., which so excited to see him. Um, but so we find out that this group, the Reapers, had decimated their whole group. They were killing some of Maggie's group right there. Um, and they, and this one guy, you know, he was he was sniping them and take taking out some of Maggie's group. That he threw Daryl around like a rag doll. And we learned that they basically destroyed their whole community. And Georgie and the twins went out west um, to look for more communities. Conveniently, went out west. What the the one Reaper guy said before he blew himself up with a grenade is that the Pope marked you. So who is the Pope? I believe the Pope is Georgie. Now the Pope marked you. Now remember what I said about her, you know, her only choosing Maggie and only um, the hilltop. The Pope marked her early on. I believe that she was chosen to rebuild or something... Um, for her down in Tennessee, that was the group that she wanted. She created this group called the Wardens. Now, this this Reaper guy that we saw in Tennessee, episode 17, he was fully stacked. Like, he had um, a sniper rifle. He had all the type of military weapon, the boots. Um, 
a grenade and stuff like that is just not readily available so they had to have get this this stuff somewhere and um he he clearly had some kind of training military training um and access to equipment that is just not normal that you could find 10 years into the apocalypse but who might have that the crm so what if georgie is similar to jadis so jadis she was out there looking for A's and B's. And we know that Rick was a B. Now, initially she was, um, she marked him as an A, but after Rick blew him up, blew himself off the bridge, she said he was her and he's really a B. So I, we all believe that, you know, that probably saved Rick, but, but what if Georgie's just like that? She is looking out for A's and B's communities or some of the brightest and you know best out there but if you look how clean cut she was her and the twins and just drive around the van that's what she said she did just drove, drove around but how does someone like georgie who, who doesn't look like she has any fighting skills neither does and i'm sure the twins are limited at, at best but just drive around and somehow they got nice you know sharp clean clothes um they don't look like they fought at all they look like they've had pretty much at ease so what I'm thinking is Georgie is similar to Jadis. That is someone that the CRM sends out there to, you know, find communities to help build the CRM and get what they need to help, you know, get bigger. And the Reapers are sort of her protection. So that way she can go to these different communities. And if she, she needs to, the Reapers work for Georgie, the Pope, and Georgie works for the CRM. And of course the CRM provides them with military and training um, equipment and whatnot. So what if something happened down in Tennessee? Now they, they were, they're called the wardens and, and Georgie was probably having, and I see, I believe that Maggie knows the Pope. I believe she knows that Georgie is the Pope. We just have not learned that yet. But what if, you know, she is in charge of this group down in Tennessee, they're the wardens, they're the ones who are basically there to kind of keep an eye on and report back to Georgie, who is the Pope, who um, who knows the CRM. Now, I don't know if Maggie knows this about the CRM, but I do believe that Maggie knows who the Pope is and knows that the Reapers may, may have worked for her. But maybe they failed at something where they weren't able to, or Maggie just decided that she did not want to do what, you know, the Pope Georgie wanted. So maybe the Pope or Georgie did not say it. She just went out conveniently on a trip and then in come the Reapers and then she makes the call and then they wiped out the group. But a bunch of them, or, you know, Maggie's group, the Wardens, was able to get out of there. And since the Pope marked you, Georgie, she had to eliminate this. And if you go back to season one, episode one of World Beyond, when the CRM felt threatened, what there was some kind of, they wiped out that entire community. So I can very easily see this happening with, with that. Now, something else to kind of keep in mind um, when it comes to J or people who know the CRM, we have not had a conversation as far as Gabriel and Negan, who they've also seen the helicopter um, and, and they're also in that, in that group with Maggie and Negan and Daryl as they're, you know, they're looking for food and whatnot at this military base that they're trying to find. Um, so I believe that conversation is going to come up. So when we're looking in Acheron part one, we know they're, um, they're, they go into these tunnels after this big storm, which is probably going to be really cool. I'm, I'm looking for great visuals, kind of, kind of like season five when we first met Aaron. I think that that could be really, um, really cool visually, but so they go into the subway tunnel and suspicions increase. Of course, you got Negan there and you got the dynamic between Maggie, who clearly does not trust or want Negan alive, let alone with her group, I, which I don't blame her considering what she, he did to Glenn. But so you got suspicions not trusting him. You got Alden there, who was a savior, um, which he's not really a big character, which makes me wonder if something's going to happen to him. But, um, so I believe you got suspicions as far as, you know, things are happening and 
she may be blaming Negan, and there's probably going to be some infighting. And then these strange soldiers are relocated to another disclosed location. And if you go into some of the pictures, um, we did see Rosita, I believe it was Maggie, Carol, and Lydia in, in one of these bases. Because I think they're all kind of in these different groups but I think they're all going to end up meeting somehow, or they're all going to be somewhat involved. Um, but you saw the dead, you know, soldiers there and walkers who were, and and the helicopter, which could come and play with the CRM. Maybe they take it. But um, so they're in this thing, and you know, these sol they're Meanwhile, those there's some of our group that are captured by these soldiers, which are the Reapers. And then we come into Acheron Part 2, which the group discovers that a member did not make it to safety um, inside the subway car. What if that member is Alden um, that they're worried about? Because some of these other guys that that are there, some of the newer people, I don't really know who they are. I, I'm not even sure if there's been a, a casting list for them that we saw, but um, it would, it's got to be someone like Alden. They're not going to have you know, Daryl be missing, but so all eyes are on Negan as the rule of survival shifts. And, and I, like I said, I think there's going to be some infighting there. Um, the motto is now keep going. They don't have much ammo, energy, food. And while they're trying to get this for Alexandria to help them. And then Daryl, it looks like, um, he's trying to find dog. Now, why is that important? Because last time dog took off, who did he go to? Leah. So, are we gonna and if and if you saw the picture that she posted, she had I can't remember that tattoo, but it it definitely looked like special forces. Maybe she ended up meeting up with the Reapers. Maybe she's part of this group. We're gonna find out, and maybe Dog found you know found Leah and Daryl. Of course, is gonna chase Dog, um, and because it says finding more than he expected, so maybe that's what he finds um, as far as Leah goes. And then you see Yumiko challenges the process, which, you know, she's she's a former lawyer. She's 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 definitely a bit somewhat feisty, so I can see her challenging. She's going to be, you know, speaking up because um, she's not going to be down with, with going there, especially the way they left it last time. And, and, a, and I think we're going to be seeing these interviews um, coming from the Commonwealth with, um, I forget uh, gosh, I can't remember his name, but um, he's going to be interviewing him. I believe this is going to be see the process, but I don't think we're going to actually go to the actual physical Commonwealth. In fact, I don't think we're going to see it until the second set of eight episodes. I think that's when we'll actually get to the Commonwealth. Um, but we're going to get into basically the process of our group getting to the Commonwealth. Um, so I do, I think in these episodes, we're going to find Leah is going to be part of the Reapers. Um, Dog's going to find her while, and we may lose Alden. We may lose some of these other people. We're going to see, I think, um, Father Gabriel is going to be questioning his own faith, which uh, that's not good, especially for a priest. And if, and that's why I think that episode where um, Aaron, you know, saw him, shoot uh now I'm apologize I'm forgetting his name but where he where he he killed that man and and you're you're starting to see a new Gabriel where he is becoming not the the person of hope that he was um and he's going to see that message and that he's going to start questioning his own faith and you know what it you know it why are they put in this situation but so I think that's what we're going to see we're going to see Leah is going to be part of that. We're going to see, um, now this may bleed into the next episode, which is hunted. Um, <clears throat> but I think a lot of the hunted may be have to, it may have to do more with Leah. We're going to tie it, tie up that story. Um, I think rendition, we're going to get more into Mercer, um, and kind of introduce him into the now 1105, um, which is out of the ashes. Now that could be one of two things or both. I think um, 
because some of the sneak pictures we've seen, um, it looked like the, the windmill was in fire um, from the, you know, the battle with the whispers. But it also could mean out of the ashes could um, talk about Connie. Maybe we're going to now maybe we're going to see Connie. There was a photo where we see Carol and. Um, um, and jeez, oh, <laughs> forgive me, but um, we see. They're standing by a tree, um, Kelly and Magna. And they, they kind of have somewhat of a smile on their face. Maybe they see Connie coming out. But last time we saw her, we saw her with Virgil. And I don't know about you guys, but I definitely do not trust Virgil. Um, even though he may have been coming to the Commonwealth, not Commonwealth, but to Oceanside and to try and help. Because last also we know that Michonne took off. So he knows some information about Michonne, but we're, I'm going to come back to that. But... Out of the Ashes, I believe, maybe tie, um, getting into the story of Connie coming back, which will be a big moment, um, and possibly talking about the story of um, of Alexandria, you know, how that how they come back from that. Um, what I'm really interested in is, is throughout all this is how is Maggie and Negan's relationship going to to work itself out because is Negan possibly going to save Maggie? Um, I, I just don't know. I don't know how they're going to work together, but um, maybe that, maybe she'll learn to just kind of deal with them, so to speak. And, and just, and I think she'll eventually maybe somewhat forgive him. Now, I don't think that um, Herschel Jr. is going to, because again, that's the man who killed his father. Um, and that's all he knows. So after that, on the inside is 1106, and 11, on the inside, that's got to be Commonwealth. Um, our group's going to be over there and on the inside um, of Commonwealth, so I can't imagine what, what else that would mean, um, unless there's some sort of CRM connection, but I'm not sure that they're going to get into that just yet. 1107, Promises Broken. Now, that one has... I'm I'm kind of at a loss on that. What are, is this going to be? Maybe back on Leah and and um and Daryl, or is there going to be you know maybe Daryl and Carol? Or I I honestly don't know. I don't know what the <laughs> promises bro broken is going to mean. And then for blood, now I remember I mentioned Michonne and. When she left, what if for blood has to do with Daryl or someone finding out about Rick, you know, that he left, what, that Michonne, where she went. And right now there's only three people who know, you know, there's Virgil. Um, there's obviously Michonne, but she's not there. Uh, and then there's um, Judith. So... Last time we saw Michonne, she was, you know, she, we're looking at that in the distance, all those people in kind of single file and they're, they're marching on. Um, but she comes into contact with two characters, one of which is played by King Bach. And he plays a character named Bailey. Um, and we may see him in the Walking Dead movies. Now, Scott Gimple in an interview did say, pay attention to the Mich how Michonne left the show. That's going to be big. And King Bach is there for a reason. Now, I don't, out, outside of paying attention to that group in the background, there's got to be some clue that I'm missing. I'm not sure. But why is King Bach there for a reason? But now, 1108 is for blood. Now, blood, of course, is family. And... As we know, Rick and, and Daryl are brothers. Now, what if Virgil, or some way, Daryl finds out about Four Blood? Uh, I mean, for or what happened with with Rick? How Michonne found the the phone that said Rick's name and the picture scrawled in of Judith and Michonne, and you know they found his boot. And what if they finally tell him, and then and then Rick's? I mean, Daryl's gonna want to go. You know, after them, 
or you know search but then there's going to be some issues i'm sure with the commonwealth that may you know try and blockade him or maybe there'll be some crm interaction i'm not sure but i think for blood we're going to find at least someone in our group maybe daryl or someone else is going to find out about rick and the information that michonne have and why she left i think that's going to be revealed in 1108 i think that's what for blood means um so yeah, those are the 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 episodes and the synopsis. So eleven oh one is Acheron Part One, eleven oh two is Acheron Part Two, eleven oh three is Hunted, eleven oh four is Rendition. You got eleven oh five Out of the Ashes, eleven oh six On the Inside, eleven oh seven Promises Broken, and eleven oh eight For Blood. Which again, I think that's going to be the episode where our group learns about the information that we know now about Rick. Um, so some other information that um, that's coming out now. Comic Con is going to be the twenty third to the twenty fifth, and as I had mentioned, Angela Kang confirmed that the um, the trailer is going to be released in. And I want to come back on what I was talking about earlier about Fear of the Walking Dead um, and the different accounts that they followed. Lenny James follows absolutely no one, literally no one, like not even his, not, not even his best friend or I don't know. There's literally he has no follows, which I think is strange. And he only has two posts there. So... And I could have sworn he had a lot of other stuff in there, and I could have sworn he had follows, but yeah, he's following nobody. So I don't, I don't know what that means. But Karen David, who is of course knowledgeable about, or she plays Grace, but she's knowledgeable about um, radiation and stuff like that. She is following Fear the Walking Dead, The Walking Dead, and World Beyond. So. Could Morgan be taken by the CRM, which will, and he, we might see him in World Beyond Season 2, or possibly into the Rick Grimes movies. I do believe that that Morgan is going eventually going to meet up with Rick. I believe Madison is going to come back, and it's, um, and we're going to have that big rivalry with her and, and Victor Strand. But yeah, those are some interesting things that are tying things in together. And the last thing I kind of want to talk about is the origins. Now, remember, and this is why I came back to Fear the Walking Dead, because July 8th, the fr now these origins are are basically going to talk about these, these different characters and how they got to where they are and what it could mean going into, you know, the our final season. So the very first one on July 8th is the best of Morgan. So why is Morgan selected when he's on fear to to have one of these um these best, you know, the best of the series leading up into into the shows. Now, one, I do believe that he is going into the Rick Grimes movies. I believe that's destiny uh, because outside, I mean, we want that reunion with Michelle. We want that reunion to, for him to see Judith and, and RJ, of course. And of course we want that reunion with Daryl, but Morgan and Rick, I mean, those two are from the start. Those, we need, that is a must and we need that. But why else could that, that coming into this final season, why might that be important? Now, this is something I don't know for sure that it's going to happen. And it's something that I would like to see happen. I'm not as strong on this as I would be with Madison, but I would love to see this happen. Is the Wall of the Lost. Now, in, in the comic books, Michonne comes up to the wall and there's a picture of her daughter, Elodie. And it says, have you seen my mom? And, and of course, she finds her daughter. It's a big moment in the comics. So what if Dwayne posts a picture of Morgan? Have you seen my father? 
now we know and you know from when we seen him in clear and everything he was crazy we didn't see a body this clearly could ex be explained that he got away he saw red um and he was just angered I, I don't think morgan was in the right mind so do i think that could have happened absolutely um would that have the biggest impact with it not being michonne there a hundred percent i mean that would be the best possible story have the biggest impact when you look at the other characters that that would be huge um to have Dwayne be the wall of the lost person um that would be my favorite but i'm sure angela king is going to do an amazing job with that regardless so july 8th is the best of morgan july 15th is the best of daryl july 22nd the best of maggie eight five the best of carol um and of course carol and daryl have that spinoff um that's coming up where and hopefully now i am i root for carol but which whoever you root for it is cool with me um i kind of i kind of like discussing how how either one could be possible i'm more in the daryl and carol hooking up um someday because i believe that it's destiny and i believe they are soulmates um because some of the strongest relationships have always started with great friendships and that's why i see that but um so look at the characters they pick morgan daryl maggie negan and carol these are core characters these are huge these are going to have big impacts going into the rick grimes movies into season 11 um season 7 for fear of the walking dead does Morgan go to the CRM? Um, I I don't know. Also, don't forget, um, TV Guide Special has a collector's edition coming out on newsstands 817. Um, so you could probably find it at Walmart or, you know, Target or wherever you might find a magazine at. Um, but I believe you can do pre-orders right now on online. The season premiere is back on 822. This is going to be huge. This is the, like, last year should have been the, the year of The Walking Dead, but, you know, the pandemic kind of shut down a lot of things. But this year is truly going to be the year of The Walking Dead. We're going to have, I, I believe Comic-Con, we're going to get the World Beyond trailer. I believe we're going to get The Walking Dead trailer. Um, we're going to have... Fear the Walking Dead season seven that comes back, I believe, in the later the the later. There's no specific date. We may find that out at Comic Con actually, but I believe that'll be at the end of the year. We got season, the first section of season eleven. We got World Beyond coming. It is it's gonna be huge. I'm excited. I know you guys are excited. Um, so yeah, let me know what you think about my prediction. Who who do you want to? Do you want Daryl and Carol to become an item? Do you want Connie and Daryl? What are you rooting for? Um, let me know what you think in the comics. Um, please hit the subscribe. Hit that like button. Love you guys. Thank you for listening. I hope you enjoyed it. And I cannot wait for 822. It's going to be an amazing year.